I'm Dr. Jerry Brewer, one of the dermatologic surgeons at Mayo Clinic. I'm going to be talking to you today about basal cell carcinoma. Basal cell carcinoma is a common type of skin cancer. In fact, it's the most common malignancy in the world with one to two million people in the United States developing basal cell carcinoma every year. Basal cell carcinoma usually looks like a pimple, uh, sort of a red bump that's usually small to begin with and slowly grows over time. Basal cell carcinoma tends to bleed very easily with minor trauma. So for example, brushing the spot with a towel out of the shower or, or shaving can cause these to bleed regularly. Basal cell carcinoma is very common in people with fair complexion, red hair, who have had a, a significant amount of sun in the past. Um, some risk factors for basal cell carcinoma include having intense bursts of intermittent sun in the past, a blistering sunburn, family members with basal cell carcinoma, or as I mentioned, red, red, reddish colored hair or blue or, or green eyes. Um, if you had a basal cell carcinoma before, your chances of making another basal cell carcinoma is as high as 50% over the next five years. Um, so having a prior history of basal cell carcinoma is a significant risk factor. Basal cell carcinoma can happen on any area of the body, but most commonly occurs on the head and neck 85 to 90 percent of the time. Of the basal cell carcinomas that happen on the head and neck, 25 to 30 percent of the time happens on the nose. There are different types of basal cell carcinoma with nodular basal cell carcinoma being the most common. Other risk factors for developing a basal cell carcinoma include immunosuppression. The two most common forms of, of immunosuppression that we talk about are people who have had an organ transplant or people who have lymphoma. People who have had an organ transplant have a 10 times higher chance of developing basal cell carcinoma, and people who have lymphoma, most commonly non-Hodgkin's lymphoma or chronic lymphocytic leukemia, have anywhere from a 2.5 to 3.5 times higher chance of developing basal cell carcinoma. The most common forms of treatment for basal cell carcinoma are surgery. And the reason why is be because basal cell carcinoma is extremely curable. The chances of basal cell carcinoma metastasizing are reported to be anywhere from 0.0028% to 0.55%, which is extremely low. There are cases of basal cell carcinoma metastasizing, but usually those cases are very large, aggressive forms of basal cell carcinomas that have been mismanaged and have been present for many years. The most common form of surgery employed for basal cell carcinoma on the head and neck is called Mohs surgery. Most surgery is a technique where the skin cancer is removed with a small amount of normal skin around the cancer. That piece of skin is then evaluated under the mic microscope immediately. All the edges are, are evaluated and if any part of that edge has skin cancer remaining, a portion of that skin is then removed, an additional portion of that skin is then removed and looked at under the microscope again until all the cancer is removed. When all the cancer is removed then the wound is reconstructed. There are many other types of treatments talked about for basal cell carcinoma. One of the um, ones that is talked about a lot recently is topical cream uh, for basal cell carcinoma, which is called amiquimod or Aldera. Aldera seems to be a popular treatment for basal cell carcinoma because it can treat basal cell carcinoma in a way to where it will not leave a scar behind. The problem with Aldera is that it does not work for basal cell carcinoma that has any roots. Um, because nodular basal cell carcinoma is the most common form, which commonly has roots, Aldera would not be a good treatment for nodular basal cell carcinoma. If a person has a superficial form of basal cell carcinoma on the trunk, the chest or the back, then Aldera can uh, treat uh, successfully these forms of basal cell carcinoma around 85% of the time.